responsibility too. Some of the men that are here today uh, came up to me and said, we're here for you. <laughs> we're your support group. If you feel overwhelmed, just look at us. I'm trying to find them. It's a real honor to be here uh, with you all at the Vista Hill Women's Council on Mental Health Luncheon to share my uh, experience, strength, and hope in recovery. I want to tell you how I got this gig. Uh, the people that represent me called me one day and they said, there's a group in San Diego that want you to come down and speak, but they've never had a man. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> Let me out. So they said, call up Linda Jones. I called Linda, and it was like I was calling my sister. We connected right away. She's a fantastic lady. You guys are really lucky to have her. We talked about Avenue Q. We talked politics and we talked Vista Hill. And uh, she was satisfied and here I am. I, uh, you know, one of, one of the... One of the missions of Vista Hill is to erase the stigma of, the, of, of mental health. And the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing is, is for that. I've been in recovery for 19 years. I've been telling my story in recovering communities. This is a different venue for me. I've been doing this for about six months because I, about a year ago, decided to write a book about aspects of my life. People have been telling me my whole life that I should write a book. And I... I never felt I really had much to say, um, and I didn't really feel like I deserved to write a book about my life. And uh, I got over that, and I realized I do have a lot to say. And one of, the, one of the aspects of the book was to go out and speak about things that were in the book. So uh, a, a speaker's program uh, got in touch with me, and they started to book me into places where I speak to people about recovery who are not necessarily uh, addicts themselves or have addicts in their family. And this is a different, you guys are a different audience for me. And I was very, in the beginning, nervous about it. You know, it's, uh, it's a, addiction is not pretty. A lot of it is very, is not pretty at all. And uh, people that have gone through it understand that. People that haven't, don't. So I was in the middle of a, you know, kind of a quandary about this, and I went to speak up in Minnesota, and I was kind of, I was checking, and I was trying to figure out whether this was the right thing for me to do. And I was doing a, a morning program, a radio program, for the first time, and they were asking me all these questions about my recovery, and it made me very nervous to be that public about aspects of my life that are that personal. And I was getting very uncomfortable and all that. I'm looking out over the square in Indianapolis, and this African-American gentleman who is obviously homeless, I'm on the radio, so they have speakers outside. And so they, they, you can hear what I'm saying out into this plaza. This African-American gentleman who was obviously homeless came up to the window, put a sign on the window that said, can you help me get sober? Now, I went out after the radio thing with the woman that was with me from the treatment center. We gave him a car. His name was Lawrence. And we said, Lawrence, get on the bus to Fairbanks Hospital, and they'll take you. He goes, I don't have insurance. We go, go there anyways. Give him this card. Tell him you met me down here. They tell him they got to pay you. These are the folks that had me up there to speak. So he goes, well, I don't have any money. We give him five bucks to go. So we take off, and I'm thinking to myself, I know a lot of alcoholics, and I know a lot of addicts. You give them money, and they're all like, yeah, 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 and the next thing they're at the liquor store. With them. So I'm figuring, this guy's headed for the liquor store. That day I get home, and the woman 
calls me up in my hotel room. She says, guess what? Guess who showed up here? Lawrence. He showed up at the treatment center and he said, you know what? I went to the bus stop. And I didn't know what I was going to get on the bus. And the first bus that came went right to that treatment center. And he goes, I got on the bus, and I went there. And it turned out the radio station that I was in talking about my recovery where this gentleman heard me was owned by the man who gave the money to the hospital that paid my way to come there and talk about this. Now, to me, these a lot of people might say, well, it's coincidence. To me, these are little miracles. And there are miracles that have happened over and over in my recovery. Aldous Huxley said, Experience is not what happens to you, it's what you do with what happens to you. 